Tell me, though, what's his technique? That last strike, it seems invincible. Hello and welcome to Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal Iron Fist podcast. My name, Immortal, my name is Connor. I'm Rebecca. I'm Omar. I'm Emma. Yes, we're joined by Emma again from, hey. from Death Party, our sort of semi-regular co-host. And um, mm-hmm. yeah, so we're obviously covering the Iron Fist 50th anniversary. Um... So if you're listening, I've assumed you've read it. Uh, I'm not gonna go. I'm not gonna say go out and read it. I'm not gonna say it's worth reading. Maybe other people will, <laughs> but um, <laughs> basically, yeah. So this is <laughs> this this is the issue which I was foolishly and naively excited for because I didn't think there was any ulterior motives. I thought they were just celebrating Danny. Which, when I think about it, that, was really dumb of me. Like considering Marvel's track record, it's like why would I think that? Why would I think they're up to something, you know, genuine? And anyway, so this is the issue that's sort of divided Iron Fist fans at the moment. Uh, people either think mm. it's okay or interesting or good, or people really hate it. And some people have been mentally broken by this. Not referring to myself, <laughs> but I've seen people kind of lose their minds and just like, you know, old man yells at Cloud. Uh, <laughs> so, yeah. It's a mess. It... <laughs> I'm I'm not gonna at all be smug about calling how down it was gonna be. Yeah, we'll get um... to that. Because um... <laughs> I, because Rebecca and maybe I can't remember if it was Armour or Emma, but Rebecca and someone else made a prediction about this. You know that they were gonna kill off Danny or something or do something bad, and I'll mm-hmm. I didn't think that was gonna happen. I just thought this was gonna be like a fifty years thing. Um, no, it wasn't 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 me. I was very hopeful. I was very excited. I was a I was a fool as well. So that was as me. I said <laughs> as I said to Connor at the time or or, or yesterday since we've read it. Uh, I didn't a hundred percent mean that. I think I was just like given the run we've had with like Heart of the Dragon and then mm-hmm. Lin Lee taking over. Like mm-hmm. it was me being my downest. I didn't actually think they would do it. But, um, Mm -hmm. yeah, it is funny that I'm on record saying, oh, yeah, they'll probably just kill him, you know, like, because we're hopeful. (laughs) Well, (laughs) yeah, they did say, oh, sorry. So they did say it was going to be a tragic uh, event for Danny in the in the article that Marvel posted a month ago. But, you know, it people probably thought it could be a tragedy for for somebody else other than than our main character uh, but you know uh, i was i was hoping fingers crossed that that was going that was for clickbait and that it wasn't actually mm-hmm. going you know i maybe again you know mm-hmm. i was very hopeful about this thing so i think i was hoping it would be something like he can never go back to kunlun or like there would be some other kind of tragedy that would be in more interesting story wise to me mm-hmm. yeah. um you know like or he would meet his sister and she would die in front of him again you know something that would be tragic but not necessarily him Mm -hmm. so so to get to get an elephant out the room as well one thing people are not divided on is the qr code uh everyone (laughs) thinks that that was a massive fail (laughs) and like just a bad idea and really stupid and Mm -hmm. no one likes it it's insane marvel stop Stop doing the QR code thing, and in this issue, your use of it was abysmal. Um, mm-hmm. a- along with a lot of other things, uh, please let me write Iron Fist, Marvel, because i got to be honest, it's just not working out with you guys doing it. Uh, mm-hmm. So just give me, give me the reins, please. I mean, let's face mm-hmm. it, the next, the next run will be Iron Fists. Mm. Let's... Mm. <laughs> I'm just giving you, pre- I'm giving you my prediction now. We're going straight into Iron Fists. And you know what? I'm mm. not going to read it, even if it's pay. You've done it, Marvel. You know, go, you know what? I'm reading it on yourself. Marvel Unlimited only. I'm not buying any more of these as monthly comics. Yeah, I think I'm going to be doing the same. Um, if I like them, days, I'll... Yeah, if I like it, yeah, I'll go back it. to it, but 
they're not yeah. getting the monthly comic money from me. So uh, I'll put a link in the show notes. Uh, Oba, who runs the I Am Iron Fist blog, who is right here, he mm-hmm. did a review of this issue and he included a review of all the covers as well. So I'll put that in the show notes because I'm about to go into the covers now. So there's a normal cover, which looks uh, fine. Like it's probably, overall, mm-hmm. I would say it's probably the best cover, even if it just looks a bit, I don't know, it's like looks a bit off with Danny in these, just in terms of like the way it's drawn. Um, it's just kind of him in space, but it's neat to see <laughs> the, 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 the different costumes. So I appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, yeah, I like, do. I like that, that costumes too. I like Alan Davis. Which is mm. it's the main yeah. one, the one that you got, Connor. Yeah, they didn't ask if I wanted yeah. a variant or anything. So it's I the one. Like yours a... is the one that says "Rest in Peace" at the top. I think they all do, don't they? Or is it just that no, one? Just that one. It's just that one. Yeah, and uh, I was going to get the Deadly Ends of Kung Fu one where he's punching the skeleton samurai. Mm. Uh, but yeah, there was also a variant cover by David Aha. Um, and which is obviously the Immortal Iron Fist artist, and he did Orson Randall and Danny, and then there was yeah. the Sabretooth variant cover as well, which I believe was uh, where is it? Uh, Kevin Eastman. Eastman. Yes, because you can you. buy the original art for four thousand dollars. Oh, <laughs> no thanks. Wow, <laughs> it's not that good, buddy. Sorry. If you're a Turtles fan. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I like, like the I like the main cover. Um, my only issue, mostly about it, was the background. It didn't make sense. Um, what that was, it kind of looked like a cloth that was folded, and then you placed iron fist stickers on top of them. So mm-hmm. I'd rather that they used uh, something a little more plain, rather than you know doing the um, oh, speed lines. I guess they look like yeah. speed lines to me. Um, so it, it kind of looked like that, or even like a close up of a of a rose or something that was blue. So uh, I wish they just picked a a, uh, a plain color uh, to begin with. Yeah, I agree with that. I think that would have. It, yeah, I'm not a huge fan of this cover, though. I, again, I I always appreciate an homage to to different costumes. Mm. Um, but yeah, I think you're right. I think against if it was a, a plain white or or black or something, it would have it would have yeah. uh, been a bit more striking. Yes, I love this. I mean, I love the the main Iron Fist art here. Uh, Alan Davis at its best. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, the first story, Training Day, which is my favorite story of the bunch, is mm-hmm. uh, Chris Claremont, and someone wants to remind me of the artist. Lan Medina. A... Yes, thank you. Uh, so mm-hmm. it's basically, as Omar goes into in his review, the exact timeline doesn't make too much sense, but... Yeah. In my head, I just assumed that this was actually before he fought Sabretooth of the Blindfold, because that would make more sense <laughs> uh, <laughs> in terms of, like, he's training with a blindfold to fight, but I don't know. I don't know. Maybe yeah. it's after. Actually, it could be after, because they're saying, oh, after every fight. Yeah, it is better. after. Yeah. That's okay. what, yeah, that's what I got. I got the sense that that Danny was going, okay, this guy almost beat me last time. How do I make sure that doesn't happen again? That's that's kind of the impression yeah. that I got from this. Yeah. Yeah, but then how? Well, like I mentioned in my blog, why does he have to be blindfolded? It's not like he's going to be blind again when well, he I think faces Sabretooth the second time. I think just to add a challenge, um, I actually yeah. did a post recently. Um, there are a bunch of scenes throughout various Iron Fist comics over the years that have had him blind fighting and talking about how he did that a lot in Kunlun, that it was Kunlun, a, a yeah. kind of a common mm-hmm. way that he trained. So, yeah, I got the sense mm. that it was just for the okay. challenge. Yeah. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. You know what I thought was weird about the training sequence, though, is th- is that Misty was commenting on it, the fighting, more than Colleen. Yeah. I mean, it didn't bother me, bother me, but I was like, shouldn't Colleen yeah. be saying a bit more about the sort of fighting, like, uh, yeah, st- you know, what's going on and, and who's got the better technique and stuff like that? I, mean, I, mean, I love Misty. No Misty mm-hmm. slander here because I know people would be ready to join me in, in not, <laughs> not loving her, but I do love her. But I did think I, 
I think it was just one page of the speech bubbles, and I was like, it would make more sense if they were attached to Colleen. Well, I, I think, actually, yeah, you're right. In my head, I was like, when Colleen was like, "Daddy can't be losing," you know, that made that kind of made more sense to me because it's, mm. she knows, like, why is he losing? Because she's, you know, beaded his head and seen all his memories, so she knows how good Danny is. So she's like, "Why is Danny losing to this Canadian short guy?" <laughs> Uh, like, this doesn't make any sense. Like, what's going on? <laughs> I really like the height difference when they drew it. It was yes. very, yeah, it was very yes. good stuff. Comic accurate, as Deadpool would put it. <laughs> I do not, I do not do anything that Deadpool has anything to do with in those films. It's not uh, my Deadpool. It's worth. I also... Oh, go ahead. It's it's worth pointing out as well that like. Wolverine's the only character, the only superhero that appears that's not in Danny's inner circle, as it were. Like, that mm. isn't, you know, mm. essentially a cast member of Danny's universe. I know Luke Cage is his own yeah. guy too, but, you know, Danny's yeah. a cast member of Luke Cage's universe as well. They're kind of, like, paired yeah. up. So. Mm-hmm. Uh, so, which is, like, you know, fitting enough because there was Iron Fist Wolverine, Return of Kunlun as well. Mm-hmm. Sabretooth debuted yes. in Iron Fist, so that's... Mm-hmm. It was neat to see. Um, I guess I was thinking of like, oh, what are some other heroes that could have appeared in this? It's probably like Spider Man, uh, Shang Chi. Surprised yeah. he didn't appear yeah. at all. Oh yeah. Um, no, I mean not like not disappointed. Just like I kind of expected him to appear, considering he's. Like, he was mentioned mm-hmm. at least. Yeah. Um, and mm. Daredevil even because. Danny was dressing up as Daredevil briefly, but you know, that's just all. Yeah. Yeah. I think um, uh, Wolverine appearing here is a selling point for Marvel. Uh, the fact that they released the uh, preview images of Sabretooth first, yeah. and then um, Wolverine in uh, I think a few a few weeks ago. So that was uh, a way to get uh, X-Men fans probably or Wolverine fans uh, in particular to pick this issue up so that they, you know, and, and Wolverine wearing the fan costume mm. is probably, you know, fan service as well. Well, yeah, it's pretty rare to see Wolverine like in these duds now. Mm, so yeah. it'd be a nice throwback, I guess, mm. as well. We we don't know for sure. I mean, we're we're assuming this is this uh, previously written story that they're just publishing here for the first time. We haven't heard anything official about that, have we? I whether he wrote no. this new. I assume no, I that, see. but I, you know, kind of reading it, I don't think it's the case because mm. it doesn't feel like it was written in the seventies. But I I don't know yeah. for sure. What did what did you guys get? It, yeah, I don't think it was written by um, Chris, and uh, he missed out on on an opportunity to to put this in a comic because it was cancelled right after issue 15, which was the setting for this one. Uh, because I think Chris forgot that at that point, right after the issue 15, um, Danny and Misty weren't in speaking terms, and they only um, got back together, um, reconciled. After Danny faced the uh, Steel Serpent yeah. in Marvel Team Up, mm-hmm. and True, yeah. um, the fact that um, Misty is wearing a, a a costume here, which she never wore wore before this, uh, probably means uh, this is really right after that uh, uh, battle with Steel Serpent in uh, Marvel Team Up, at least. That could be an art thing, though, right? Like, artist yeah. rendition of these characters. Yeah, artist rendition, um, yeah, that's true. But, yeah, I... Yeah, I agree. I don't think it was a previous um, thing, which is actually kind of neat, which means that Chris may have written this for this issue, which I would think would yeah. be great. Um, I think, yeah, that'd be, I think that, that would be cool. Yeah. yeah I, that I spent mean, time on it, yeah. that's what I got. Sorry, go Sorry. on. Uh, Rebecca, <laughs> you first. Sorry, that was the sense I got was that it was written for this, but yeah. to fit in neatly with what we had. Mm-hmm. And, you know, Clement's uh, one of the kind of iconic Iron Fist writers. Like, I think he, those yeah. early Iron Fist years, he has done the majority of in both Deadly Hands of Kung Fu and the Iron mm. Fist comic. Um, yes. He was experimenting with 
substances possibly in Deadly Hands of Kung Fu. Who knows? But what a wild <laughs> ride. <laughs> uh, and I mean that in a positive way. You know, I'm not, I'm not <laughs> ragging on it. It's just very crazy. But yeah, this is a great. Like, I love stuff like this. It's like a focus on martial arts and. Mm. Like like you said in your review, Omar, it kind of like every superhero training session. Danny starts off getting his butt kicked, then he comes back, remembers his teachings, and mm. you know gets the upper hand on Wolverine. And mm. yeah, it's uh, it was a lot of fun. It was cool seeing you know Colleen with dialogue yes. in an Iron Fist comic. Mm-hmm. I know, <laughs> so. I know, right? Yeah, amazing. <laughs> and I I just I love also. Um, the fact that because so this does take place after Iron Fist 15, the implication here that um, because in Iron Fist 15, Danny meets Wolverine for the first time and they they fight because they there's a misunderstanding, etc. And so I love the implication here that that happens. And then presumably one of them goes, you want to fight again? That was really good, actually. Which feels very in character for Danny. Like, can you can you train me? Do you want can we spar a bit that I, I just mm. I love that. It's actually that, that yeah. is very good for him. I feel like that's character. Sorry. I, I feel no, like go that's, ahead, go ahead. I feel like that's a character for both of them as well. I can see either of them doing it, which I like. Yeah. Cause you know, old um, Snick Bub loves a good a good rumble. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they also had a training session in New Avengers. Um him and Don't Danny, remind right? me. Right. Do not remind <laughs> me of that. Yeah. Screw you, Bendis. I did think of that. Yeah. That was bad. That was Bendis, yeah. <laughs> oh, that whole run was awful. I'm sorry, I really didn't like it. Uh, but yeah, uh, some really nice panels, nice sight work, and a, a nice mm. fight sequence, which is rare in an Iron Fist comic these days, unfortunately. So, you know, if you yeah. do grab this issue, like, check this story out. It's good. Sure yeah, one one more thing I want to say real quick, just because it, it really, really struck me um, as uh, just someone who thinks about this sort of things. I love the approach to representing Danny with the blindfold on is that we start off with mm. J- Danny just against a white background and you don't know why. Yes. And then you cut to seeing where he actually is and you go, oh, mm. we're seeing what he's what seeing, he which think? is nothing. Okay, seeing, and I yeah. love that we get we go back and forth and the, just the depiction of Danny. I mean, I read a lot of Daredevil, so I think about this sort of thing. Yeah. Um, Danny, uh, how he's using his hearing and how that's uh, depicted on the page, how he's trying to sense where Wolverine. I just thought it was really smartly done in the art and in the writing. No, that's a um, really so good that. catch. Too. It's a really good catch because I, I, it was just sort of, it's like subliminal in your brain when you're reading it. But now that I'm actually paying attention and you're saying this, I definitely see it. And that's really clever of the artist mm. yes um he's an uh eisner awardee i believe land okay. uh-huh. and i love the fact that um the letterer used uh thought balloons which you never see in comic books anymore true yeah i hadn't even thought of that uh, yeah i do yeah, really so it's like really that. call back to the 70s and 80s where you use thought balloons so I miss that, and I, I love seeing it in a modern comic book. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, me too. Anyone have any other things to add for this first story? I'm good, I'm good. Ready to go for the next one? Yeah. Danny has some, he has a great line at the very end. Um, it's unfortunate that it's not reflected in the rest of the issue, but I really mm-hmm. like that line at the end that he has um, about what what being the Iron Fist is all about. Yeah. Mm, yeah. Before his midlife crisis. Um, right. Living weapons. <laughs> uh, <laughs> right. <yeah. laughs> no, it's, it's good. Uh, for people wondering, he says, being Iron Fist isn't just about punching the bad guys. What I was taught in Kunlun was to protect people by forging a path that gives them hope and leads them to a better future. I just hope I'm good enough to do that. Yeah, uh, it's nice to get like an Iron Fist job description now and then because it's still kind of vague. Like It's like <laughs> champion of mm-hmm. Kunlun and mm. the idea is like he should probably be there to you know help them out. Yeah. But yeah. Mm. So yeah, you should probably put something like that together, um, Connor. You know, an Iron Fist job description. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> you'd have to, yeah, because there's a lot there. 
uh it's very yeah i think i think we could put it to, we could put a job description for iron fist together and then and then marvel will ruin it with the next story they publish so <laughs> make it easy for them <laughs> <laughs> so uh the next story is called iron fisticuffs and it's by Alyssa wong mm-hmm. writer von randall artist arif Prionado, colorist and vc Travis liner letterer and this story follows Pei, yay, and Lin <laughs> as they fight Shocker. Sort of looks mm-hmm. like a bit of a yay. amped up Shocker. <laughs> um, yay, we like Shocker. Love Shocker. And I he's guess a, he's a souped up um, Shocker here. True, yeah. Like I'm still not a Lin Lee Swordmaster fan, just because mm-hmm. to me it's still like does not jive with the Iron Fist title. Mm. Um, but uh, this is definitely the best Lidley yes. story I've read. Not, yeah, I mean, it's him agree. and Pei, but it's like one that actually... Oh, there's like other Iron Fist characters with a significant role in his story. Like, I I do appreciate Alyssa Wong putting Danny in the yeah. new yeah, Iron Fist miniseries and not making a joke out of him or killing him or humiliating mm-hmm. him. Um, yeah. Uh, mm-hmm. uh, this was nice to sort of tie it together a little bit with Pay, mm-hmm. you know. So yeah. now Pay, I have not read Pay's miniseries yet. It's just kind of on that list of things I've yet to do. But did mm-hmm. she get her powers back in that, or the miniseries no. before she lost them, wasn't it? No, no, it wasn't. So the mini. Oh, you mean the online one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 So the mini, yeah, in that she, you know, she didn't get her powers. She got this disc that from uh, that is presumably something from Kunlun that uh-huh. Danny gives her. Uh-huh. Um, yeah, as a as some as a personal test. It's I love that mini series. I definitely yeah, recommend exactly. checking it out. But no, yeah. she doesn't have she doesn't have uh, the Chi of Shalao back. Okay. Um, as yeah. of that story, anyway. She seems to in this. Y- yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, I was confused yeah. by that. Look, you know, mindless retcons annoy me, but if Heart of the Dragon is the target of mindless retcons, then I'm all for that. So, <laughs> you know, if we could just erase that comic, cast it into the chasm of hell, <laughs> and the very the... nice circle where it can be frozen next to Satan for all time. <laughs> <laughs> well, so so here, so, just to um, so at the on the last page or the second toward the end, uh, she does say she's talking to Lynn. She says, "You've got the power of Shaolau, and I don't anymore." Yeah. So she still doesn't. So this could yes. be relate. I, I don't. Yeah, I, I don't know what's going on. With I powers. think. I mean, it seems that from what he says to her, she's got mm. a a very closely related power or she's she's bucked the iron fist trend because like what does he say that the the dragon chose you like Mm. she could be like a different kind of iron fist um because she's Mm. clearly demonstrating the power even though she knows she hasn't done that trial well um i I think she was able to channel that here because when they do a fist bump yeah, no, um, definitely. That's what I mean. But the fact that he's saying, I, I just wonder if her her chi powers come from somewhere like a slightly different mm. route. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. There's um, the. Yeah, it, I mean, the dragon chose Lin Lee as well. Yeah, well, that's mm-hmm. what I. That's one of the things I don't like about that. Is um like I don't think you should do something twice. That's yeah. um, something a bit different and special, but I agree. Mm. Look, I agree. I think this was the best we've seen that uh, Lin Lee. Yes. Um, I think it is setting up an Iron Fists run. Mm. Um, I thought it was the best Alyssa Wong has written both of them. Yes. Um, I agree. Yeah, I and... loved. I, lo- I I liked Pay in this a lot. I mean, I always mm. love Pay in things. I'm really glad that she was in this uh, this mm. anniversary issue because she should. She should yeah. be. Um, yes. And yeah, I thought she was written quite well here, so I really enjoyed her in this. Um, and my yeah. final point is that Shocker is like a villain for hire in this one. I just want to say. Yes, it was. 
Pei and Lin Lee clearly need more training if Shock is giving them this much trouble, though. Yeah. <laughs> um, I mean, give, give Shocker a little credit. Give, give the guy some credit. I don't know. <laughs> it's not that bad. No. I mean, the, I mean, the Shocker's, Shocker's always a joke camp. Uh, Spider-Man knows it. We all know it. doesn't matter how they try and make him threatening. Look at his costume. <laughs> yeah, but they see... Oh, sorry, go no, ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. Uh, okay, I just wanted to say, um, so when I interviewed uh, the artist, Juan Randall, um, he said that the design um, for uh, for his gauntlet uh, was something that just Marvel just approved. Oh, okay. And then he, he made it look uh, cooler, and then uh, he tried to see if Marvel would, would uh, give it a go signal, and they did. And so when when I saw his art for this and how powerful Shocker looked, I think he uh, he got an upgrade in, in power. So that's you know maybe yeah. that's yeah. how he gave uh, Lin Lee and uh, Pei a lot of trouble. Because Pei's Pei's pretty good uh, yeah. in terms of ability. So mm-hmm. um, I like that little pose she does with the with her palm. Yeah, in front of yeah. her and her mm-hmm. fists in the back, that that little yes. piece is really it's like my favorite panel from the story. Mm-hmm. But yeah. Oh, by the way, the the artwork the artwork here they're actually on sale. The pages they're oh, between wow. five hundred to seven hundred dollars each. So you got oh, boy. money to spare. <laughs> it's available. <laughs> oh man, that's very cool. Out of out of my budget, but very very cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Mine too. <laughs> <laughs> I I do lo- I love um the little exchange that that Pay and Shocker have about how old Pay is because her <laughs> yeah. age has been so inconsistent. <laughs> yeah, I yes, I appreciate yes. that being kind of a joke. And so here mm. she's in middle school, so we can mark yes. that as a different. <laughs> Uh, we can keep track. I've been keeping track of how old Pay is in any given issue, so mm. <laughs> that helps. <laughs> True. Danny Cage also has that kind of elasticity of age. A exactly. Bit. Yeah. Yeah. And it yeah. drives me nuts. Uh, it, yeah. It yeah. drives me mad. It's like she's a I baby forgot. and then she's a toddler and then she's like walking <laughs> around and back right. to being a baby. Right. I forgot yeah. that could exist. I'm going to be honest. Oh. Um, <laughs> and what's funny, even funnier is as we'll flash forward, we know Danny's 34, which again, like, Floating right. timeline comics makes no sense, but the idea that Danny's aged a year while well, like Danny mm, Cage yeah. has aged like four years is funny because mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure oh, she, she was born after Immortal Iron Fist. So. Yeah, she's been a baby for 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 at least a decade. Yeah. <laughs> oh yeah. So uh, yeah, I don't know how they're gonna work that out. <laughs> there's there's no working it out. It's... <laughs> <laughs> they, to be honest, they probably should have made him 36 or something instead of mm, 34. At, le- at the very yeah. least, yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, I mean, I mean, even just in terms of that, that is the worst year ever if all of that only happened in yeah. one year. That's uh, terrible. <laughs> yeah, yeah, look, I think Tekken has you beat there, but I won't go into that. <laughs> um, that's ridiculous. It's been like 20 years since Tekken 4, and I think a year has passed in-game. Um, mm-hmm. um, less than a year. It's <laughs> so stupid. But anyway... Um, oh. Anyone have anything to add about this story, or are we moving on? Moving on. Okay. Okay. Um, uh, I think for me, I, I just want I'll to just... say... Okay, Emma, you go first. Oh, no, but yeah, just real quick, I wanted to... Co- I, I mean, we've talked, we've talked about the art, but I just want to compliment how dynamic and, and uh, action-packed the art is. I think um, yeah. the yes. artist did a great job. Yes, uh, yeah, yeah, I'll tell him about that, too. Um, I, okay. I interviewed him, and I saw him yesterday, and oh, I... Cool complimented him with the with his art i mean i already saw preview pages of this but uh, once i got my hands on on the issue uh the action is just uh, amazing it's really amazing yeah yeah definitely great so first two stories good second story has sinister undertones uh because of how <laughs> it's linked to the last story and how where i think marvel are going with the whole mm-hmm. thing, but we'll get into that later. Time for the third story, mm-hmm. um, which is the Daughters of the Dragon story. Mm. Um, I mean, uh, I think it's okay. It's, 
it's like not really my kind of thing, but that's fine. It's you know mm-hmm. funny. So I'll probably let you guys talk about this one more. I thought it was cute. I thought it was cute and in that yeah. kind of um arm of when like Danny's setting up his school and he's got all the kids like learning math so they can learn kung fu and mm. um you see him like one of the times Misty does come back is to help him with the school. Um mm. I think it's sweet giving like Misty and Colleen actually ending up having a good time doing their things <laughs> and um at least it recognizes Misty and Danny aren't still together. Um, mm-hmm. What else did I think about it? I I thought it was a cute little diversion, especially as we'd already had them in the first story being more serious. Um, so I think it kind of represented another side of Iron Fist. There's like that slightly more goofy side that you you see in Power Man and Iron Fist a bit. Um. Mm-hmm. And you also see in in some of the other sort of subsequent stories. So I quite enjoyed it as a a palate cleanser, should we say. But it was obviously not as um, substantial as the first two. Yeah, like this is a uh, it's a fun um, story. Um, You kind of need something like this uh, in an anniversary issue, I think. Um, like something behind the scenes. Um, uh, I like the I like the artwork. Um, it's very uh, cool, very fun. Uh, great to see the three of them. You know, uh, you love the dynamic with um, Luke and Danny, with um, Colleen and Misty. But it's also great to see just Danny, Misty, and Colleen together. Uh, just because they they came from the same comic book, uh, they started from the same comic book, the same line. Uh, so seeing them, um, you know, do a behind the scenes story uh, about you know what they do when they're not uh, doing their superhero stuff is also it's, it's a great uh, addition. Yeah, I I enjoyed. I, first of all, I I really appreciated how much of a presence that um, Misty and Colleen had in this issue. Um, mm-hmm. They were in three out of the five stories um, because yes. it is also their 50th anniversary this year. And it's very yes. unlikely that they're getting their own issue or issues, which is too bad. But so it was mm-hmm. nice to see so much of them in in this. Um, I, yes. I think my favorite aspect of this story was the art. I love this art. It's very yes. funny. It's very expressive. Mm-hmm. Um, and yeah, it's it's I, I this isn't my favorite story but it was yeah i agree it was cute it was fun it was i appreciate a lighthearted thing always um so uh yeah i i enjoyed this one it made me smile yeah i mean i could read an entire comic uh with this uh with this type of artwork it's very good yeah yeah i do love the artist um her was it uh black widow she did like amazing art the art is definitely a style. Mm. <laughs> I, I, I mean, uh, you do have to get used to it. Yes. Um, yeah, and no, it's, not... it's, it's it's kind of like the manga kind of style, but not like all the way. Um, it's like very mm-hmm. cutesy and stuff, which I think works. But I, I probably wouldn't. I probably wouldn't want like an Iron Fist mini series all in this art style, personally. <laughs> but uh, mm-hmm. I, I did like Breathless. Me and just me. <laughs> but maybe I'll hate it this time. Maybe I won't <laughs> like it next time I read it. So who knows? Uh, anyone else have anything to say about that story, or is that uh, is that it? Okay. Well, uh, we get uh, the next story is like just a one-page kind of ad for Heroes of Hire mm-hmm. uh, by Frank Thierry, Ty Templeton, D. Kanifi, and VCs Travis Lanham. Uh, Todd Templeton being the artist, Dee Kniffy being the colorist, and Frank Thierry being the writer, uh, who's Christopher Priest, right? Uh, no, no. Um, Frank What's, Thierry? Yeah. Who? No, was, it's somebody else. Was Christopher Priest alias? Jim Owsley. No. Okay, I was way off base. Uh, <laughs> I do know Frank Thierry. That's okay. Though. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, uh, I thought this was really fun. I like Luke's mm. catchphrase, we'll bust your ass. Yes. 
Yes, um, that was so funny. <laughs> listen, I, I, I want if Marvel and they won't, but if if Marvel put out a Heroes for Hire will bust your ass T-shirt, I would buy that in a <laughs> millisecond. I need that. I, I think that I love this. This yeah. totally made me laugh. I love this page. I love this story. Yeah, I would totally get that shirt as well. Actually, uh, yeah, same. <laughs> yes, I would. I would too. <laughs> me for uh, I mentioned in in my blog as well. Uh, I think this is an uh, inspiration from uh, the house ad that Marvel had for uh, yeah. that Bill Sinkiewicz Sin- or Bill Sinkiewicz mm-hmm. illustrated back in the eighties, where uh, yeah. you see Luke being angry about uh, readers not buying their comic yeah. book, and then another ad for for Danny, you know, telling people to buy our comic book so that they won't that that, that uh, you know, so that Luke doesn't come in there and uh, bust their ass. <laughs> and, you know, it's – and then Marvel says, you know, it's cheaper than a medical bill. So uh, I think that's that's inspired. That That's the inspiration I, for this one. So I really yeah. liked it. Yeah, I definitely – That's I, I think that's definitely what they're calling back to here. I think you're right. I mean, is it me or is the time right for – a Power Man and Iron Fist revival. That's not the one we got in 2017. Mm-hmm. Or whatever. <laughs> like a good I mean, one. The time, um. <laughs> the time, the time is always right for a Power Man and Iron Fist, mm-hmm. Iron Fist revival. On you know, I I think yeah. they are way way behind schedule in getting us a new Power Man and Iron Fist ongoing. Yeah, well, they could give us a show, which they won't do because I know hate, they hate Danny Rand. But I know you would think. Mm-hmm. Oh, if they can, if we can, if they can do a par, if they're going to do Iron Fist with Lin Lee and Pei, then we need a power man in Iron Fist with Danny in it. Yeah, which we yeah. won't get. Uh, Rebecca, do you um, have anything to say about this one? Uh, no, but I, um, well, you know what I'm going to say, which is any mention of El Aguila. Yes. Oh yes. Mm. <laughs> My heart expanded as I knew Connor would be rolling his eyes. <laughs> like, I was like, yes, bring him back. And then I was like, oh, it's only one page. Yes, yes. Um, no, yeah, no. I was, what, uh, I was, I was going to circle back to to what uh, Omar just said about the Iron Fists, but I think what I have to say might be even more downer than my last prediction of Danny getting killed in his 50th anniversary <laughs> thing. And like, I'm pretty sure Connor knows what it is. So uh, maybe on. we'll leave that till after Go we've on. read the last one. That Well, <laughs> Iron Fist will clearly have Danny as the bad guy. Oh, well, yeah. oh, I think no. I, I, no. <laughs> I think yeah, I, I, don't, I don't know if it'll do that yet, but I think that Iron Fist will be the, a bad guy for Pei and Lin Lee to confront. Um, mm-hmm. which I think is going to be absolute mm-hmm. And then crap. to bring him back. But, I mean, look, this is what Marvel's been doing with Danny. They stripped him of his power. He said They said he was never good at it to begin with. They gave it to Okoye to fight the big bad guy with, and mm-hmm. then he just, like, never mm-hmm. took it back. Uh, he got humiliated, you know, lost his mm-hmm. job. He gets beaten up all the time to make other people look better. They killed him, and now they bring him back as a villain. Lo and behold, the character assassination of Daniel Thomas Rand is complete. Marvel will make mm. their, you know, non-white Iron Fists. And no, I'm not one of those crazy right-wing people, but it's clearly what they are doing due to the backlash of the Netflix show. And word on the street... I said that in quotations because take this with a grain of salt, but word is that Kevin Feige has it in for Danny Rand, um, which get yeah, people where have brought this up to. Oh. Mm. People mm. I brought this up to doesn't don't seem to think it's that far fetched. So yeah, mm. I've jumped the gun a bit here, but like to me, it's just blatant, blatant what they're doing. They're completely destroying him. They're destroying his credibility as a character. Like they're just. Uh, you know, stripping him of everything and making him a villain. Uh, just it does feel um, now. Feige's in charge of the comics. It it does feel very. Oh, he's in charge uh, of the comics. Well. Wow. Yeah, yeah, he's in charge of all divisions. Now. I yeah. I did not know that. That is yeah. that sucks. That's bad. I news. mean, uh, very very Although... high level, but you do see much more MCU synergy coming into the comics. You and yeah, and, yeah, we do. See, um, yeah, and. Uh, I mean, he he pretty much dictated what the Ms. Marvel being a mutant thing. Um, so 
that's how we you know that's that's like the first really obvious one and i and i agree i mean whether it's because the tv show had all that controversy or whatever he's um it's clearly a target danny's clearly a target and this the whole lin lee thing smacks of a let's make someone else be the iron fist but not quite getting that pay was there um and like what other asian characters have not really been sold selling well let's try Swordmaster kind of thing there, there doesn't seem to have been a lot of thought around that whole mm. mini or we would have got maybe a slightly longer run that explained it better um well that's just what drives me nuts about all of this is that it's just yeah if there was any sort of other logic beyond just let's ruin this character then maybe, you know, you'd have something else to cling cling to, to say, okay, they have a plan, but clearly, you know, just, I think is just, I think Connie is exactly right, that clearly the plan is just get rid of Danny, and it's... it's and, and it, I mean, it clearly is, and like, if, you know, and, which is weird to me, because MCU, if you do take the Netflix shows, we do have Colleen as the Iron Fist, whether for better mm. or for worse, but they yeah, decided course. not to do that. Well, obviously, right. for me, it was. I would have right, preferred but, it if they did that. Well, you know, honestly, I, choose an, no. I mean, if they were going to choose an Asian um, over Lin Lee and Bay, then I would have preferred no. Colleen. Uh, uh, to me, there's no question about it. It should have been Pei. We already had Pei. Yeah, but She's yes, already an yeah. But yes, like, definitely. There's, there's yeah. no need for Colleen to suddenly get it. It's like it was Pei. It was the easiest mm-hmm. legacy change over to not fumble and they absolutely fumbled it and that's one of the reasons i'm so angry because like Mm. you know like it could have been the smoothest transition and i know we all wanted Mm. danny to stay but you could then have the connection to danny the whole time you know as a as a mentor as a trainer as a Mm. you know like and uh and to suddenly chuck in lin lee who you know just then randomly have to explain why in the five issues and then Mm -hmm whatever anyway um right yeah. yeah and pay i mean you know pay actually made sense she seemed i mean i like her we all seem to like her she seems popular yes. with iron fist fans who are mm-hmm. going to be reading the comics yeah i know i fully just seconding everything you said well it's just nuts in the eternal monkey pouring of being an iron fist fan we're going to get pay as an iron fist now but instead of danny being a thunderer slash awesome random like mm-hmm. figure he will be a villain He's bad, and he's yeah. going to use his privilege as villainy mm-hmm. and use his big business to do bad things. Because I innocently thought Timeless was just a cool what if, you know? Oh, not, definitely okay. not. Mm. Definitely not something I wanted to see in the future. But I think that's where they're going. And if they're not going there, then they're just they're going the route of villainy. I can feel it in my bones. I'll be foolish to believe otherwise. Yeah, um, I'll say something about Timeless. Is the, the previous Timelesses haven't haven't been road paths to stories and yeah. i i assume the same for this one like what they are is how did they work well what they what they always are is they always involve time travel of some kind in the in the iron fist one in the most it was just this is set in the future the previous mm. two were set with kang all they really exist to be is a story where they can flash forward to some future comics to sell. So like those pages where you have five or six oh. panels of other heroes. So I assume mm-hmm. this timeless is the same. And I think it might be a coincidence mm-hmm. that um that Danny and Moon Knight involvement because mm-hmm. um it's a hell of a long time ahead to plan for Marvel. And mm-hmm. they know that things change, right? Because they yeah. if they're really gonna do that roadmap, they have to have Luke get all those other powers they have to have Conchu suddenly become a big bad again when he's mm-hmm. just become a big good again like literally mm. um you know he's just come out and saved the world so um mm. in blood hunt so yeah plus i'm not a massive fan of the guys who wrote timeless and to me it mm. seemed like huh, it's a good idea i don't as we've as i've just said i i absolutely agree that danny is on a villainy path of some sort whether he's then uh redeemed or not i'm not convinced he will be um because it does feel like someone's got a grudge against danny um i think it, i'm sure pay and to a lesser extent Lin Lee would like that to happen and maybe that's why you've got danny saying at the end of that first story that the Iron Fist is to 
give people a second chance um is that maybe there will be that so i'll i'll give you a hint uh, uh, my my slight positive is i don't think timeless is the roadmap yeah um, okay. Okay. Uh, but and uh but i i i don't know i'm i'm also conflicted about what i think was actually shown in that qr panel but i um mm-hmm. The yeah. most angry about the QR. Like, I literally went in and cancelled my <laughs> comic because yeah. I'm like, you're taking a financial hit for this. That's that's not right. For yeah. all the for all the X Men ones, they were like little bonus scenes. This isn't a bonus scene, and it's not yeah. teasing anything. If like, because all the other ones were in in the first issue of X, the new X Men runs, and they were all like little. And the and the page was the first page of the second issue. Like we've got no mm. new Iron Fist run announced. Yeah. So this is uh, this is just kind of like, and and then people are going, oh, they didn't want it to leak. I'm sorry, but it didn't leak that he was going to die. Mm-hmm. So who cares yeah. if the QR page leaks? Like clearly, people don't mm-hmm. care enough to have leaked the big thing that happened. So, so anyway, mm-hmm. I, I actually I did not my mind. I was just so far elsewhere that I didn't even notice the QR panel. Yeah. So I, I mean, it, that's yeah. it, it, probably how I, I would have been. Dare I ask what it was? Oh, okay. Uh, yeah. So we'll. Oh, you didn't. No, we'll... no. I just fully didn't even notice it. We're oh we're, okay. we're way off track here. I wanted <laughs> okay. to I wanted to say the cue. Okay, okay. Yeah, can... um... You go back and do <laughs> that. I'm gonna, go, I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go. Put the page in chat for Emma. Yes. Okay. So yeah, as as everyone who is listening is gathered, we've kind of we've discussed where things are. We think things are going as we enter this last story, happy birthday, Danny. We've already discussed this a bunch, so listen to the whole podcast if you skip forward. Um, Mm -hmm. And this is done by Jason Liu, the writer, Will C. Portacio, Will Will Portacio, the artist, Alex Sinclair, the color of species, trans, love, and the letterer. Uh, I hate this story. It sucks. It's trash. It's awful. Um, why is why is Jaren and Luke the only people at his birthday party? Why is he thirty four instead of like thirty six? Um, mm-hmm. You know, the the thing with the Iron Fist costume. Omar, you said you were unsure about that. Mm-hmm. I don't. I definitely don't mm-hmm. think he actually has chi. I think, I think it's yeah. just a hallucination. And I think mm. it's they. I think Jason Lee wanted Danny to be in his Iron Fist outfit for yes, his for the final anniversary. Fight. Yeah. Or, or more for his death, like for his final fight to his death, I think he wanted him to be in the Iron Fist garb with the chi mm. and stuff. I think, mm. and they just figured, oh, like vague dialogue about am I hallucinating aspects of this? I, yeah, I of... agree. Mm. Um, I thought it was a hallucination or on the, in the spirit world or in some other kind of thing. It wasn't like, but then it was weird because the final panel before the thing is like, happy birthday, Danny Boy. So what's happening? Is it happening con? Currently, no. is he? It's, it's happening separately. It's it's later, yeah, because he he says that you know I I left and I was I had I'd had a few and I you know there it is implied to be happening later. Yeah, so yeah. I guys, you can see I also flipped through. If you saw this, <laughs> I feel like if you saw this fight physically happening, so to speak, Daddy would be in his like pajamas or whatever. Um, mm-hmm. Like he wouldn't, yeah. like he wouldn't be in the Iron Fist garb. They wouldn't be in this red room. It would just be like, yeah. you know. Um, but like, so I understand that, and I respect the idea that let's at least have him have his final stand in his mm-hmm. outfit. Like, because the Iron Fist, whether he's Iron Fist or not, that's his identity. That's he. That's been his whole life. Mm-hmm. So he should have mm-hmm. his, you know, final fight in costume. Um, yeah. Yes, I think. Yeah. Uh, let me just insert a little bit about um, how um, artists, writers, and editors work. Uh, because of my interview with uh, with uh, Vaughn Randall, and then yesterday at the uh, at the signing event for the Iron Fist 50, um, I talked to Lan Medina, who illustrated the first story here. Um, I asked him about working with Chris Claremont. Um, and he said he didn't really get to talk to Chris because uh, he was really working more with the editors. So more than anything else, I think the the direction for uh, the entire 50th anniversary issue um, came from the editors. Um, and then the writers yeah. just are just told what, what to write and then just 
you know, come up with with uh, means to get to where they're supposed to end that, and then also uh, the fact that uh, Lan uh, and probably even Will's here, uh, they probably uh, didn't really talk to the writers uh, directly in order to get this done. So it's possible that uh, Will's uh, illustrated Iron Fist uh, or Danny in his Iron Fist costume as an artistic choice and then uh, sometimes the editors will um, will approve sometimes they won't but in this case they did or uh, it was the editors themselves who told them who told him to put him in the iron fist costume you know it's funny mm. the editors being in charge of this and not like the mm. writers makes perfect sense <laughs> mm. <laughs> yes literally tragic you no know, um. it's not like before I mean, before it was just the writer and the artist uh, working together, and then the editors would just review everything after. I think this one is more more, more I mean, they, uh, of the hand of the editors. They still have to pitch the idea to an editor. It's not just the yes. writer go, "Oh, I want to write it." So I mean, like the, the mm. editors still always have the fight, like the final say. But mm, um, true. yeah, but before I, th- I don't think they would have been saying, "Go write this," you know. Yeah. But I'm sure there's yeah. examples of it, but you know, just so, checking who. Are, very like, quickly summarize off. this. Um, sorry, what were you gonna say? No, I said I'm gonna memorize who the editors are and put them on my list. Oh, good. Yeah. <laughs> um, so, uh, Danny is having his 34th birthday party with Jaren and Luke. He gets drunk and then he goes home. And Chi Lin is possessing Razor Fist, and they fight. And then Chi Lin kills Danny because he's like, "Ha ha, you got away from me last year, but you're not gonna get me away from me this year." Um, Chi Lin, for those who don't know, I mean, I'm sure everyone knows, uh, he's the guy who kills Iron Fist at the age of 33. I think only mm-hmm. two Iron Fists have escaped this fate, or three, and one of them's not. So, th- yeah, look, we'll go into the whole Chi Lin thing after this, because <laughs> it's going to be yeah. a conversation. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, I... Uh, you know, just, like, what... Like, Really, like, just this is a real f u to Iron Fist fans, right? Like, oh, it's your 50th anniversary. Oh, he's dead. Um, they did it to Dark Orb too, <laughs> lol. Um, but oh, yeah, for his 20th anniversary, right? That was a while mm-hmm. ago. But he got brought back. I didn't know that. Five issues. Um, but mm. uh, yeah, it's just like the fight's okay, but then it's just a really abrupt ending, and you just get a tiny little panel. Of Danny losing and getting killed, like not even a full mm. full page for his death or anything, and you know you don't. And then we just mm. with the QR code, mm. which no one like, everyone hates. Mm. You <laughs> just get his tombstone, yeah. so you don't see his funeral, you don't see the fallout, you don't see how people react. It's just his funeral. Well, you know, it's I, look. Iron Fist is not going to get the Superman treatment. We know that he's not going to get six months of comics where Iron mm. Fist is dead, and we're not going to have. Reign of the Iron Fists, where there's four Iron Fists running around. That would be really cool. Um, but, <laughs> we could. Um, you never know. <laughs> we, I mean, we're getting there. We're halfway um, there. We got Fallout and stuff, and there was just nothing here. He just dies, and then he comes back mm-hmm. in that villainous kind of, I think, yeah. you know. Weeks later. And I just, like, oh, thanks, Marvel. Like, that. I feel like I got tricked into getting this mm-hmm. issue. Like, they tricked me. I saw Omar's interview with C.P. Mm-hmm. Sobolski. I was like, oh, cool. He seems like they seem like they're on board with Danny. Mm-hmm. You know, even if he's, they're not on board with Danny as Iron Fist, they're just going to do a nice tribute to Iron Fist and Danny. And then I yeah. got tricked by Marvel and they killed him. And <laughs> on him. Mm-hmm. And I was like, oh, okay. You, you tricked me. You swindled me. It's like Heart of the Dragon again. It's just like, I mm. despise you, Marvel. I despise, like, I just despise you for stealing my money um, and, you know, <laughs> just crapping on things I like and lying and, yeah, mm. uh, just... Uh, and, again, like, after I read this, like, uh, the first thing I said was F you, Marvel, and then the second thing I said was, like, really, who is it? that hates Daniel Rand so much mm. at Marvel. Mm. And as we've kind of mm. discussed previously, there's the theory that it's Kevin Feige, but, it, it, you know, we don't know that for sure. It could be mm. a lot of people. Yeah, because, it could be, you know. Yeah, because, because Feige wanted Immortal Iron Fist on the big screen. 
So that's what's crazy about it. And until Jeff Loeb that was before the show came stole. out. Yeah. Yeah. Like after the yeah, show comes out, in. yeah. All that blowback and stuff. You know, maybe mm-hmm. he hates Iron Fist now. I think because you know, all the bad press on Twitter apparently is more important than actual fans who buy the comics. So, you know, mm-hmm. people who yeah. like Iron Fist and buy the I Iron Fist comics, yeah. they love Daniel Rand. They love him as Iron mm-hmm. Fist. Yes. You know, we don't want any of this. <laughs> it's people who don't read Iron Fist that want this change, and it's the ones that are getting the, uh, the, their money's yeah. worth. <laughs> yeah. You know, the good the good part of this is when Danny punches his arm off. Like that's the good part. That was um, cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that was a nice panel. Yeah, yeah. There are it, some nice panels in this fight. I, I was thinking are. as I read it, you know, this is oh, this yeah. is a, a, a well illustrated fight. I wish the story was better. Yeah, and this was and this was uh, Will Sportasho, who's a who's a legend in uh, X Men uh, among X Men creators, um, with Jim Lee back then and Rob Liefeld. Um, Will's is still good. I mean, um, it's been uh, a while since I've seen his uh, current artwork. And uh, seeing him do Iron Fist uh, made me so happy. I mean, just looking at his pencils uh, when he was uh, uh, posting stuff online, uh, I knew I was, you know, I was really excited for this. Uh, I, you know, um, if there's any consolation to this, it's excellent, excellent artwork. I think uh, I'd love to see Wills do an Iron Fist run. Yeah. I wasn't as fond of the art in the pub. As I no. was in the, the pub, yeah, not, the yeah. For for some reason, the pub is just okay. Uh, but the fight scenes were the ones that uh, really carried it for me. You know, I am, I'm not opposed to tragic endings. I'm not opposed mm. to like people who know me and know what type of storytelling I like. Damn right, no, I'm not opposed to bad endings for people. No. I am not opposed to Danny getting killed in a fight by something. But the, mm-hmm. the thing is, right, it has to be done mm-hmm. well. And it needs mm-hmm. more than four pages. <laughs> more context. <laughs> you know? Yeah. Um, it has to be written well. It needs to get a good amount more of reason. time. You know, it needs to... Yeah. I mean, I would have done... If I was going to do this on the 50th anniversary thing, I would make this fight last the entire run of the comic and have mm-hmm. the others as either people visiting him in hospital as he was dying or hallucinations or, you know, memories uh, to get in some of the other styles yeah. and stories and then maybe have the Pei Lin Lee thing uh, as a sort of additional thing at the end. Um, mm. Or him saying, how, you know, somebody saying, where's Pei and Lin Lee? Why aren't they here? And then it flashing to that. I, I just like, I agree. Mm. It's like it, it, shoving it in as the final story mm. just felt very um, afterthought. Like, oh, we, we forgot the whole point is to kill him off. Yeah. Um, right. Like so you, you end up with the, like you have a good feeling. And I think that part of that is that you, you have this good feeling going into it. Um, right. And you, and none of the stories distract you from that good feeling. And then mm-hmm. uh, this very a brief just like punch, and it's just like if it started with oh it's his thirty fourth birthday, why isn't so and so turned up? You know like where's this or you know like oh Misty and Colleen are doing uh, just grabbing this, and then um, I don't know. I just think there's it should have been a whole issue. Other heroes get a whole issue for their death. Ms. Marvel got a whole issue for her funeral. Mm-hmm. You know. Um, yeah. I did feel cheated about no funeral. Like you want mm. Luke's reaction. Yeah. Like you know, you want everyone's reaction, but you know, you got maybe funeral. they'll come back. If anyone remembers, I, did think that oh. I watched. Them. Yeah. yeah. But I'm just saying, even recently, Ms. Marvel got a funeral one. You know, funeral yes. for a friend. The whole yeah. superior community. We get a, a gravestone, and oh look, here's a skeletal hand. Mm-hmm. Thanks, Marvel. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah it I really was, did. I was, oh, go, Emma. Oh, I was going to agree. Yeah, it really does feel like a, a bit of a bait and switch. Um, and that that is how I felt as well mm-hmm. reading it. Is that oh, this is these are this is fun. This you know these are fun stories. I'm having a good time. And then all of a sudden, hey, well, here's a here's a massive downer. Happy fiftieth anniversary. Mm-hmm. 
Mm. It's really, yeah, the t- it's just tonally, it feels very disrespectful. Happy yes, happy fiftieth yes. anniversary, Danny, and F you. Did Davos write this? Is Davos <laughs> is <he> the <laughs> editor of Marvel? <laughs> we'll see. So it would make a lot of sense if he was running things over there. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I was talking to somebody uh, yesterday. Um, he he hadn't read it, and he asked me how how uh, it felt. Um, he's uh, one of the uh, big guys here at the comics community in the Philippines, and he asked me about it. And um, I told him how the community was feeling, and then he was surprised about. Oh my gosh! I mean, he knows he knows Wills as well. So Wills killed uh, Danny. I, I mean, no, he's just the artist. <laughs> it's more of you know the, the writer or the the editors. And I said, you know, I told him about uh, how that felt because it, you you know uh, Marvel kills uh, their characters and then brings yeah. them to life, etc. It happens in their comics. Uh, but those guys have a regular run where they can flesh those things out and, you know, even prep the readers for it. Uh, you've got um, an announcement for Deadpool dying. You've got an announcement for Miss Marvel dying. But you already know that those guys are coming back. Uh, you don't have anything like that for Danny. And then also um, to do that, to do this uh, death issue, even if there's a resurrection at the end, to do the death issue in a 50th anniversary um, felt bad because you're supposed to celebrate. You're supposed to celebrate right. Danny here. It's 50 years of him. You need something of him in action where he's victorious, where he's celebrating with his friends. Um, I mean, you can do that if since Danny doesn't have his own title, you can do this in another um uh, somebody else's title, like, you know, Marvel's done that before. Miss Marvel uh, died in uh, ASM. So why not do that with Danny, even with the heroes around him, uh, make it more heroic, like rescuing somebody, protecting someone, and um, just having that tribute for him? That would have been uh, better, and I would have really just preferred that uh, this issue was more... Uh, and ended with on a more p- positive note. Uh, even with that resurrection at the end, it just doesn't feel uh, good. Doesn't feel natural. It just uh, dours the mood uh, when I should be super happy about it. Uh, I'm, you know, it, it brings all of the other stories down uh, somehow because I, I was very happy with uh, not very happy with with the other stories and then um i even i even said in my blog that i liked um jason lu um how he switched from uh the Mm. celebration with jerian and then this thing comes in but it was very uh it's very short uh it would have worked better if it was somewhere else you know just don't put it here yeah i've been thinking um it, just to kind of cope, I've been thinking about this in relation to the last issue of Power Man and Iron Fist Volume 1 when Danny uh, seemed to have died and how abrupt that was and how kind of – because that was the end of that run and and how uncertain yeah. that was and just thinking, okay, I'm sure Iron Fist fans felt the same way then and it all turned out okay, but it, it's just hard to be hopeful. You know, well, it really that was, is right now. That, yeah, yeah, I guess the difference is – Back then, we know what happened. It was just one writer who was spiteful at Marvel who decided to kill Danny. And then, yeah. But he got a funeral, and the funeral had a Daredevil blind gag in it. And yeah. Mm-hmm. But, yeah, yeah no, that was dumb, too, and I'm glad that Iron Fist turned out to be a plant person. We need John Byrne back. John Byrne needs to bring him back again. Someone mm. get, him, get him on the staff. <laughs> get him on the staff writing yes. Namor so he can bring him back again. Uh, it's yeah. This is the most disastrous superhero birthday since Alan Moore wrote Superman's birthday. Like this is, <laughs> uh, except that was a good story. Um, yes, it was. And <laughs> uh, the yeah, so the QR page shows. Oh, here lies Danny Rand. You know, hero mentor friend, and then a blue a blue skeletal fist punches out of the grave. Um, and that's the QR code, which was on the back mm. of the issue. And uh, again, unanimously hated 
that they put that behind a mm. QR code and everyone mm-hmm. says that should have been in the issue. Yeah, that's yeah, ridiculous. That's mm-hmm. that yeah. See, I mean, ridiculous. Emma didn't even see it. Right. I it. <laughs> seen it. I, I'm not. I watched, I'm not looking at I, QR codes. I'm warning yeah. my guy. <laughs> <laughs> it, it didn't even say scan here for an epilogue. Yeah. Oh, it was just a QR code, and it was just like, um, I you know also if I'd read it before I'd seen that it existed, which because I was away from home, so then I also would have done exactly the same as Emma. I'm like I just I don't read my comics to like pick up. Easter egg clues to like, oh, you get some more mm. content if you do this. You know, I didn't necessarily have all my tech with me, and like, you know, so it's mm. just I don't know. It's just I'm gonna write to them because never write to them. So yeah, and also um, I-, I thought uh, a better use of the QR code would have been to show additional Iron Fist artwork um, or the the promos for the comic books or the the graphic novels that already are out uh that show Danny uh Danny's story um these things the the one with the the editor uh Danny Kazem would have been would have worked better in that QR code uh, like a yeah. bonus content i would have preferred uh um a portfolio of uh, artists who did work uh over the years um Maybe a few illustrations that we haven't seen before or we've rarely seen. Uh, just put it here uh, because that would have been a, a great celebration for Danny that we could see um, uh, legendary artists uh, do their thing. Um, some didn't make it to to the final page, but at least now we see them. So that's that's something that uh, I would have preferred. Uh, I I like seeing those things, and you see that in omnibuses, and that would have been that would fit here because this is a 50th anniversary issue. And I also would have preferred that this was 80 pages instead of 40. Oh, yeah, that yeah. was never going to happen. I mean, if Luke didn't even get a 50th, you know, like, the only reason they gave Danny a 50th was to kill him. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. It, no, it I was. mean, it's... Because, Luke... you know, like, otherwise give Luke one. You know, Luke Luke absolutely should have had oh, one. Oh, yeah. Um, yes. you mm-hmm. know, he's Deserved one. Incredibly important character in the... And, I'm you know, mm. look, it's an Iron Fist podcast. Obviously, we love Iron Fist. But, you know, Luke, as a black superhero, street level, is like, has such a more significant place in the world as like this right. um yeah yes. it's irrelevant to who we're the bigger fan of um but like it, it does feel to me like they only gave him the 50th to do this and uh because and 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 to what omar was saying before about him dying somewhere else it's like they've just had this massive event he could have died in blood hunt this could have been a, a danny rand yeah movie. like they, they literally yeah. could have done it we could have had a funeral and like um and and I, I I don't know. And the whole QR code thing is just I'm I'm sending them an email now saying I hate it. Yeah, yeah. I'm not opposed. I, I I like Omar. I like what you were saying about using the QR code to to show additional material like mm-hmm. they did like they did mm. for X Men. But yeah, you can't yeah. put major plot points behind QR codes. You just can't. That's, yes. that's absurd. Yes, and you know the thing about QR codes. I read from a Bleeding Cool art article about this is that QR codes, their shelf life is about nine years. And if you oh, use Jesus. the QR code after uh-huh. nine years, you wouldn't even see the resurrection anymore Good of, uh, of Danny. I so mean, I'm sure you're never going to see it in... in symbol. <laughs> uh, sorry. Uh, I'm sure it will appear in whatever the next comic is, but I just mm. have zero interest. And well, we have, yeah. it hasn't been announced yet. Like, yeah, just well, this, this feels like, and as we now know why Luke didn't get an anniversary special, because Iron Fist would never have got one unless it was specifically just to kill him. And this, no offense to the writers involved in this, but this feels like it was kind of slapped mm. together, you know, to do this. And the writers did their best, obviously, with what they had, but it's mm. just like, you know, where's Kerry Andrews, Ed Brisson, Ed Brubaker, mm. you know, like. Mm. There's like one play... iconic Iron Fist writer here. Uh, mm. It's just so like it. It was it was fine, but um, and just the just just insulting. It really just feels like an fu. Like they're mm-hmm. laughing at us. Uh, they're laughing at Daddy Red fans. That's what it feels like. So I'm mm. uh, just 
I'm not happy. And, and sorry. Just I, oh, go on. Sorry, I was gonna say I agree, but it's also who do they think got Iron Fist to fifty years, if not Danny Ram fans? Yeah, right. no, that's a very good point. Like he, you wouldn't yeah. be publishing these issues without your fans us buying yeah. buying your comics like suckers. I've made this speech before with mm. Heart of the Dragon. I'm like, we're giving you money and this is what you're doing. You're just mm. crapping down our throats. And, uh, oh, so... and you know what? Uh, let me just add to that very quickly, Connor, yeah. uh, about uh, Iron Fist fans, um, you know, uh, buying the comic because of him. Um, at the Iron Fist Iron Fist 50th anniversary signing event yesterday that was uh, held by uh, my LCS. Um, they had, at, I, I'm sh- I'm pretty sure they had at least a hundred copies, and they sold out yesterday. So which is oh, wow. great. I mean, I yeah. really love the fact that the everything was sold out. Uh, even the ones on display, they were all sold out. The variants were sold out, except for the one in fifty variant because that's uh, the the most expensive one. But otherwise, everything was sold out. So you, you know, there's that's a market great. for for Danny uh, because they know this is an anniversary for him. Um, and it's you know because you know it's not Lin Lee on the cover. No. Uh, it, it's Danny. It's a fiftieth anniversary. They sold out. We had a signing event. People turned up. I mean, there could have been more people who would have turned up, but if they did, uh, they wouldn't have gotten a copy. It's so, about, it's, it's, really, it worked well. Yeah. That's great. Yeah. It's almost just determined yeah. to drive all these people away. Like it's, you know, it's cra- It's just really crazy to me. Like I just, mm. it's, I just haven't seen this level of disdain, like transparent disdain towards a character. It's, you know, right now, anyway, it's just nuts. Um, Mm -hmm. And let's, should we talk about Chi Lin? Mm. So, Uh, a little bit, yeah. (laughs) Yeah, well, um, you know, does it make the most sense that he's come back? No. Uh, And the, the way Danny beat him before was not using any of his training. That's how he beat the Chi Lin. Mm. Right. Got the advantage on him because, like, oh, he's like, you know, this thing kills Iron Fist, so I'm not going to use any Iron Fist training. And, mm. but like here, he just sort of reverts back to his training, and there's all. I know he's like drunk and at a disadvantage, but it's also the fact that he's just randomly possessing Razor Fist, who is has nothing to do with Danny at all. Like, not even mm. an Iron Fist villain being possessed. Uh, mm. Is like, he, like someone brought up to me, like, oh, what if he was possessing Davos or Davos is involved somehow? I'm like, yeah, it would have been a lot more fitting. Mm-hmm. I would have yeah. loved to have Davos in this issue. Oh yeah, that yes. would have been nice yes. to have him here. But we just and this, if they like, needed somebody to to cut off his arm, then you get the scythe. <laughs> or, yeah. Right. Oh, what if Chi Lin was possessing Shang Chi? That would have been a neat twist. Um, oh, oh my gosh! <laughs> well, it could have given Shang Chi more story as well, but yeah, uh, I, it just—I don't know—just someone involved with Danny, somebody being else possessed instead of this goober like Razor Fist. Um, I understand he's supposed to be a big deal, expert martial artist, Shang Chi villain. You know, he's got razors on his fist, but like, come on, maybe, mm. maybe, maybe the art, maybe the writer liked Razor Fist, mm. or maybe the maybe it's the, the you know the not to be named editors that wanted it. Uh, but yeah, Chi Lin is like, other Iron Fists have escaped this fate. One Iron Fist simply stopped being Iron Fist. And the Chi Lin stopped going after him because he wasn't Iron Fist, mm. right? No, that's my memory of it anyway. Danny's not Iron yes. Fist anymore. So why yeah. is he being targeted? Yeah, yeah, that's true. Yes, because it, it's going, the Chi Lin's intention is, it's not that the Chi Lin hates Iron Fist, it's that the Chi Lin eats the Chi. So if he doesn't have the yes. chi, what yeah. is the point? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I guess it sounded more like a revenge tour for him. Yeah, well, right. he's, he's like seems prideful and he's making it sound like it's about a grudge that he got beaten, which I guess. Mm. But um, <laughs> you know, Orson Randall avoided it by doing heroin, which is the controversial retcon for that whole thing. But um, mm. you know, it's just yeah, it's. Uh, I mean. Um, I'm not opposed to Chi Lin being the guy, 
but again it's just a matter of doing it well and with context and giving it more time mm -hmm. and we just didn't get any of those things so yeah. you know at least it wasn't Okoye I guess killing him <laughs> it's like <laughs> just a random characters uh. But yeah, so you know, there is there is lots of problems to poke holes in with the fact that it's Chi Lin, and there's mm. lots of problems with I think like getting Razor Fist to do it. Um, mm. But I guess at least it's like a martial arts style character. But yeah. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, true. Mm. Are you gonna get into the comments as well? From, yes, from, I was, from if no other else, people. If no one else has anything to say, I'll go right into the comments. Yeah, mm. the, we have a ton, yeah. <laughs> ton of hate mail. If uh, yeah. was male. <laughs> so, got a ton of hate mail. First, we'll do uh, Andrew Nicholas. Uh, sorry if I mispronounce your last name. I think I got it right. I think he's written in before. He's just wrote in on our page. Um, mm. uh, he says, I was fairly disappointed with it as a 50th anniversary special. It would have been a good lead off for a new series about Danny. But in the last few Danny appearances, he's been beaten pretty handily by his opponents that he should have been able to win against. I was hoping mm. for a Taskmaster rematch at the very least. At least Claremont remembered that Danny is an excellent martial mm. artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, uh, Danny, mm -hmm. Danny kind of losing where he really shouldn't has definitely been a hot topic on the podcast uh, for his like recent stories. Um, more Heart of the Dragon, I suppose. But uh, yeah, thank thanks for the feedback. Mm. And. I will go to... So, Carl left some feedback. Uh, he said... So, I'm going to say something? No, sorry. Okay. Uh, Carl says, I'm able to attend, but I'd like to share my thoughts... That's right, Carl's still on the show. I'd like to share my thoughts on the 50th anniversary special, which I'd rate as C+. Regarding to the mm. conclusion of the issue, I have several concerns. Firstly, the inclusion of a code was perplexing, as I didn't realise its significance until 17 hours after reading the book. My main mm. points are as follows... One, if the demon from Phantom Limb has taken over Danny, does this mean he's now a villain? Two, the connection to Moon Knight was hinted at in Timeless. Three, didn't mm. Danny essentially become the hand of Dormammu in either Avengers or Defenders? Honestly, I had hoped the storyline would lead to Danny uh, training with Strange, resulting in a fascinating martial arts dynamic. Additionally, considering Danny was the wealthiest hero in Marvel, will Luke pay Misty Colleen now inherit his fortune? summarizes my thoughts on the issue on a related note since the iron fist has been used by numerous heroes including she hulk are they all destined to meet the same fate um i mean they should be really i guess mm -hmm. i don't know um when he says she hulk was had the title iron fist did that have anything to do with danny or was that like a no, he didn't uh, get the title he more of uh he was given the power uh, in order to uh, fight uh, certain villains in Avengers. Um, I think this was during the Moon Knight uh, thing in Jason Aaron's run. Wait, is this She-Hulk? She-Hulk, yeah. yeah. Okay. Yeah, that's where she got the power. Right. Um, Danny was very weak. Uh, his power is drained, and then somehow it got to She-Hulk. She of course. To Jason Aaron. <laughs> yeah. It's a terrible, terrible arc. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, and he got possessed by Agamotto. Maybe that's what Carl's referring to, mm, and that never you. got resolved. And we've always kind of joked about it that he's like running around mm -hmm. with Agamotto inside of him. <laughs> <laughs> it is one of our best recurring jokes. Um, <laughs> I'm not 100 percent sure, sure it's the demon from Phantom Limb. I mean, mm -hmm. because I think. While I accept that Carl posted the page for us to show us how similar the arm looked, mm. um, like I think it could just be an art style thing. Like I'm not saying it's not, because mm -hmm. I think there's a chance it is. Um, but I yeah. think if you were a demon, you wouldn't need to have your muscle being built back onto your bone. So I, mean, I, don't, yeah. I don't know. I'm, I'm like, I'm ambivalent <laughs> on that. I'm, or neutral, I should say, on that. Um when I when I see purple, my mind automatically goes to Steel Serpent, and that might mm -hmm. not not be relevant at all. But that was where my mind first went, just because purple tends to be what I associate with him. But it's, yeah, it, it's, it's bluish purplish color. Uh, yeah, 
Could be. My family. I, mean, I, I, I don't know how that would make sense, but yeah. Sorry, go mm-hmm. ahead. My first thought went to Timeless, which as Conchu aficionados have pointed out. Uh, yeah, me too. Conchu's like not in that kind of place right now, unless they're playing like a big prank. I don't know, but um, I I don't I just I can't imagine like when it, when Marvel seems to dictate what happens with Iron Fist, they seem really bad at like pulling from earlier stories or adhering to continuity. So I would really be surprised if they were acknowledging Phantom Limb. Mm. Um, and I really like Phantom Limb, but uh, it would it would surprise me. I think there's a villainous turn coming because I think the writing's on the wall with them all mm-hmm. hating Danny and setting up Pei and Lin Lee. But mm-hmm. yeah, just you see, it most reminded me of that Carrie Andrews cover. Actually, is it the cover where he has the skeletal? Oh, yeah. Oh. oh yeah. Yeah. Also, um, that, that one too, which somehow and wasn't Namor on 23. there. Yeah, when he came back from the dead in John Burns Run and Namor, uh, it yeah. kind of looked like that a bit. I mm. did think plant people for a, a brief moment, mm. and then just when I I don't know if I could deal with that. <laughs> like, <laughs> <laughs> on top of everything else, I do not know if I could deal with that. <laughs> like he's underground. There's plants around him. <laughs> they don't like it much, you know. <laughs> I was reading through comments online as well, just random comments, and none of them were positive. Mm. A lot of them were like, why yeah. kill Danny in his own anniversary issue? Like, that was... Mm. And Marvel has no and idea Kayless. what to do with this character. Um, mm-hmm. So... And Kayla's comments... Uh, I know. Um, yeah, yeah. I'll, um, they were very... <laughs> oh, sorry. What, what were you going to say? No, I was just saying they were, they were very... Uh, uh, emotion, uh, emotionally charged. He's not happy. Comments. Uh, yeah. Kala is the Kala or Kala. I've been saying Kala all this time. I assume it's correct. I thought Kala as well. Kala. Okay. Um, but he's been he he runs the Iron Fist page on Facebook. He's a friend of the show, and uh, he's not mm-hmm. happy. He's really not happy. Uh, so I'll get to his feedback. Um, <laughs> uh. <laughs> Oh, he emailed. Okay. I mistook uh, his comment as the email, but it was just a very long oh, comment oh. about how angry he was. Um, so, oh, okay. <laughs> I'll so go it's to something the, else. Oh, all right. I'll go to the email. Um, oh, here it is. Okay. So this is a long one, but we'll do it. So... This is from Carla Torres. Iron Fist 50th Anniversary Special Overview by Carla Torres. Spoilers included. So yeah, that was definitely a comic. That's for sure. It had words and pictures. Hi, I'm Carla. I live in Australia. I'm part Filipino, part Hawaiian. I work in disability support work. Used to be a watch repairer. And have been a fan of Iron Fist for over 30 years. The highlights. A tribute to Don Perlin and a section where a very young Danny is training with Wolverine to improve his ability to fight while blindfolded. And that's honestly about it. The training scene takes place in the past and ties very well with early comics, referencing how Daniel Rand uses sense of hearing to compensate for temporary blindness, but what happens when someone with similar physicality to the Sabretooth, who is also a martial artist, can sneak up on the likes of Daredevil? Young Danny learns, adapts, and overcomes, and if you're wondering how this fell apart and how quickly, the answer is sword fragments, and quickly. I don't have a problem with the character of Lin Lee. I have a problem with... Uh, how he's been written of late, the living embodiment of a Mary Sue, or whatever the male equivalent is, that's a Gary Stu, uh, worthy of Mjolnir, because reasons, mm. got the power of Shalau, because the dragon liked him, question mark, and in addition to having Iron Fist powers, he also has green glowing claws, because if there's one thing Iron Fist needs, it's claws. How unique hero with claws on hand, never seen that before, not even in this mm. comic. But anyway, my hate for his Current story arc is an article unto itself. There was no need for Lin Lee to become Sword Fist. I mean Iron Fist. Pei was right there. She is written to be glaring at Lin as if within my own eyes. <laughs> it's like the writer was either self-aware of how <laughs> stupid the entire thing is, or so unaware that they truly believe this to be okay. To have a guy replacing the aspiring young girl on her way to be Daniel Rand's successor, like Laura with Logan, or Riri Williams as Tony Stark. Did Alyssa Wong worry that an Asian female Iron Fist wouldn't be popular? Is that why she brought in Swordmaster? Or did she just forget Pei existed until it was way too late? 
my brief intermission there. I doubt Alyssa Wong made that decision. Yeah, mm-hmm. I'm pretty sure it was Marvel. But anyway, mm-hmm. I'll continue mm-hmm. the feedback. Sorry, back to the topic. Lin Lee are fighting... Lin Lee and Pei are fighting Shocker. Isn't he a Spider-Man villain? I mean, it's not like Kiro's own villains, but this is an Iron Fist special. Couldn't they have used someone connected to the Iron Fist legacy? Good point. Mm-hmm. Uh, he mm-hmm. can't tell a middle schooler from a five-year-old and thinks the guy with the claws is Iron Fist instead of the girl with a glowing fist who doesn't have claws. The comic can't seem to decide if Pei is or isn't an Iron Fist, and the scene ends with... What? They don't even show the end of the fight. I mean, it's obvious we're meant to focus on the teamwork and growth that they're trying to force us to love, but come on, don't build up a fight without finishing it, preferably with an epic combat combo or a killer line. Or not. Mm. I'm familiar with the concept of subtract, sometimes less is more, and there's no doubt in anyone's mind that they will manage to beat Shocker, but who cares? We never learn who paid Shocker to take out Iron Fist. He admits he doesn't even want to kill, and his presence does nothing for the story. This is the 50th anniversary for Iron Fist. Give us content relevant to Iron Fist. Oh yeah, Lin Lee has the Shaolau power, but Pei can use her own chi somehow. Is that a thing? Can everyone use chi like this? So after the fight with no end scene, we're treated to a flashback starting with the Daughters of the Dragon. So they can help Danny with his community center, which is cool. It shows another side of Daniel mm-hmm. Rand, a man who mm-hmm. wanted to give back to the community. But his reason for calling Colleen, but his reason for calling Colleen and Misty is in quotations, he didn't want to be left alone with all these kids. Mm. Get lost. The guy opened a dojo for children and made sure all the kids got fed and tutored. This section ends with a joke about a cotton candy snore. I get what they were going for, but it didn't land for me. Next. El Aguila? Now that's retro. Danny and Mm. Luke doing a promo for the Heroes for Hire. Nice callback, but don't tease me with nostalgia, only to leave lead to a lame, bust-ass joke. Ha ha. Luke said, bust-ass three times in two frames. Luke used to be crass. Look, the fourth wall breaks they did in the retro comics are fun, but where is this even going? Am I drunk? I like that joke. Bust ass. But anyway. <laughs> um, no, Danny is. It's his 34th birthday. He turned 33 back in 2008, dude. It's been, dude's been 33 for 16 years, sort of. He was 29 in the Living Weapon. No, not BS. I literally asked Carrie Andrews himself, and the events of Living Weapon actually absolutely took place sometime after Immortal Iron Fist. Proof? Wei Kong was alive in Immortal Iron Fist. That is strange. Huh. Uh, that's another thing uh, to get into later, I guess. Uh, now look. Interesting, yeah. <laughs> I know time is more of a polite suggestion in comics, but are we seriously meant to believe that everything that happened between Immortal Iron Fist and today was one year? Is this an alternate mm. timeline? Is it really that wibbly-wobbly for people who grew up in Kunlun? I suppose a lot can happen in a year that lasts 16 years, unless he actually did go back to being 29 in The Living Weapon, and no, I just can't. There is no reason for this. This bizarre 34th birthday party shifts between a nice pub scene with friends and some... Is it a hallucination? Is Danny that off his face that he's seeing Shang-Chi villains mixed with his own past villain, killing him in a dream sequence? What was in those drinks? Yeah, I wasn't exaggerating Mm -hmm. when I said Danny was drunk. If you need context for what might be going on, back in 2008, it was found that a monstrous entity known as the Chi Lin would kill every Iron Fist after they turned 33, except Ornthus and Randall, Quan Yazu, but that's okay, the entire Marvel Universe forgot Quan Yazu, the first Iron Fist to live for centuries in the 8th city. Its purpose is to kill the Iron Fist whenever it turns 33, and also to eat the egg. The living Iron Fist somehow serves as a gateway so the Chi Lin can get to Kung Lun and eat the egg, and so far it's always failed to eat the egg. The Chi Lin can't be killed, only discouraged. So kind of cool villain, right? Daniel Rand was able to defeat the Chi Lin with a destroyed shoulder after being poisoned using only his rage. So why is this new vessel of the Chi Lin able to kill Danny? More importantly, why is he even bothering? The purpose of the Chi Lin is to kill the current Iron Fist. So, yeah, why isn't he after Lin Lee? Is there an unhatched egg? The Chi Lin will try again? Not now, while the dragon lives. The Chi Lin stars. It is the only the unhatched egg that can feed it. Those are in quotes. The timeline implying only a year has passed is nonsense unless this is all meant to have happened before the living weapon and the Briss and Perkins run and everything else. Why is Danny in costume? Is this a dream? He says it's an illusion, but what's causing it? Why is Chi Lin even bothering? It didn't bother going after Orson Randall, who lived to be about 100 or so, despite missing when Orson reached 33. Why is this happening in an Iron Fist anniversary special, the 50th anniversary? This is not going to make me love Lin Lee and Pei. I was already a fan of Pei, and Lin Lee is a Mary Sue. 
Usually, when a hero that's been around for half a century dies, they get a nice send-off, even if it's temporary. They save lives, have time to reflect, and maybe they save the universe. Or maybe they just save a small number of people, usually those forgotten, or they save someone they love, but they die as they lived, as heroes. This was not a hero's death, it wasn't even an epic fight, it was against Razor Fist, a Shang-Chi villain, one iconic, sorta, but hardly an A-list villain. The first time they thought Danny was wrecked and still demolished the Chi Lin, now he's drunk, so that's why he dies so quick. I get that Razor Fist is a vessel for Chi Lin, but why? You know what would have raised the drama to Eleven if the Chi Lin possessed someone like Colleen Wing or Luke Cage? Danny died fighting to make sure they got freed, but without killing his best friend. You know what else would have been nice? Some build up leading up to this. Not spoiler marketing like the death of Wolverine, but something to hit that the Chi Lin was back, and why? Motives matter, clarity matters, continuity matters. And yes, I know that the shocker being used to distract Pei and Lin is now explained, but Lin Lee is the one that, Chin, that the Chi Lin needs to kill. That's a really good point. This didn't need to identify the time period as Danny's 34th birthday. There are other reasons for friends to get together. Maybe Pei was graduating high school. And this did not need to be in the anniversary. If it's a way to clear the deck to see if Marvel can market Lin Lee and Pei, then they can eat my butt. <laughs> In fact, I'm sure of it. That's why they hint that Danny will be back, just in case, not that it's needed in comics, it's like the one place where death doesn't have to be permanent, just in case Lin Lee doesn't get the fans. Overall, this comic is a disappointment. Marvel doesn't know what to do with Iron Fist, and can't decide if it should get rid of Danny completely, and if so, how, or if it should replace him with an Asian, or if said Asian should be female or male. So Marvel is playing it safe in the worst ways possible, and I'm just done. The living weapon made Danny become the new Thunderer and pay his student. They had every chance to build on this, to show Daniel Rand's growth from young brash hero to the successor of Lei Kung. They could have even made it work with Lin Lee, without making him an Iron Fist, but still be a student of Daniel Rand and the Thunderer, teacher to young martial artists alongside Shang-Chi, but instead we get five pints and two shots drunk with Acid Trip and Razor Fist, and some glowing skeletal hand rising from the grave. The 50th anniversary was a mistake that want, makes me want to drink five pints and two shots. Oof. Thank you for the feedback, Carla. Um, yeah, the, yeah, when you think about the Chi Lin stuff, it really doesn't make sense. Uh, yeah. It didn't even occur to me that Lin Lee is the one that the Chi Lin should be going after. <laughs> no, I yeah, mean, he's actually, clearly yeah. too young, but yeah, he's, you know, yeah, that's, that, the only that's one true. That can feed him. Yeah, so he can't get his nourishment from Danny. So again, it's like, yeah, it just makes it's it just... even more puzzling. Like they didn't yeah, just... think about this. Yeah, they haven't thought through it. Any single decision they've made about Iron Fist for the past how, however many years now, it's it's just it's just it's just frustrating. It's just I don't yeah yeah I'm very tired. I'm tired of this. Yeah, we have more feedback. <laughs> oh, continue. Yes. <laughs> uh, so deadly podcasts of kung fu says it wasn't until this issue that I realized with Lin and Pei, Danny had his own bat family. My only complaint is this issue should have been arranged different with the QR page at the end. I'm very excited to see where this goes. Well, that makes one of us. I'm glad someone's <laughs> excited. Um... <laughs> yeah, there are some um, sprinkling of uh, positive notes. Yes, it's not all negative. Yeah. It's mostly negative, but there is some positive. Yes. Uh, but yeah, after, I... after, I just can't. I just can't see any good because it doesn't make any sense and it's poorly written in terms of the uh final story i mean <clears throat> uh big tez art says not gonna lie the ending qr code ruined it for me it's another mm -hmm. complaint about the qr code without spoiling i just wish he had a better ending on the positive side it was amazing to see pay again and kicking ass i love the daughters of the dragon helping danny with the kids my favorite part is the training it brings back Old Iron Fist with Kung Fu. Um, yeah, I agree with that. And then Dan Monaco writes, really don't know what to make of it. Here I thought he would get the Ronin suit or get a talisman from Kunlun. I just hope Danny lives through this and he mm. has a purpose. Mm. Uh, I do too, unless that purpose is a villain. And he can stay dead. <laughs> <laughs> okay. 
Uh, Chris, slightly confused most of the time, says, Love the stories. Don't love the big attention-grabbing ending. The QR scene is entirely unsurprising, and I'm just sad that that particular superhero comic book trope gets so overused. Anyway, I like having an Asian Iron Fist, although I wish Lin Lee wasn't also the magic sword guy, and if this gets us a Danny Iron Fist with new or different powers, or the same powers at the same time, I'm for it. That would be nice. Mm-hmm. Uh, Warwick writes, ruins by QR code. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So, uh, long thread of feedback from Iron Fist eBooks. Don't worry, not as long as Color Therese's feedback. Mm-hmm. But thank you, Color, for your feedback. Um, the stories covering different characters and time periods made it feel like a celebration of the whole history of Iron Fist, which I really liked. The lack of Kumun or any of the immortal weapons was sad, but beggars can't be choosers. I also liked the variant covers. Clement's story was a good way to kick things off. Takes us back to a classic story, fleshes it out in a way which serves as a standalone, here's what's cool about Iron Fist. I especially liked how Colleen and Misty were a part of it, although did they dress like that back then? Wong's story was very enjoyable and well-drawn. I liked the dual perspective of giving us insight into both characters. I liked how it efficiently gave Pei an arc built from nothing, and I liked how it did some canon tidying that we got confirmation that Pei is not powerless. Ireland's story was delightful, and the art beautifully enhanced the stone, the tone. <clears throat> this one had the this one felt the most anthology book story, and that it was a very slice of life, and had a last page character tells you the moral of the story moment with a punchline that kind of falls flat, but it's cute. Uh, Thierry's was a really solid one-page gag comic. There's not too much to say about it, but it definitely made me laugh. One-page comics are hard to make. Good comedy is hard to do. You got to recognize when both are done well. Well, this is purely a feature. Was this purely f- to fill the page count of the issue? Hmm. You know what else they could have filled that page count with? I wonder. Uh, <laughs> Lou's, Lou's story had a good concept that I felt was let down in execution. I also felt this way about Werewolf by Night, also by Lou, also out this week. I think it's the dialogue. Too much info dumping. To old readers, it's just, hey, remember this? And there's not enough for new readers not to be alienated. Then, when the story actually happens, it doesn't feel like the characters are fleshed out enough to care about. Where's the emotion? The motivation? Well, whatever. I'm avoiding the actual thing to talk about. Um, I do like that Danny is one of the few characters of a canonical age, which has been updated multiple times. If it, it means he's a central pillar in tracking the sliding time scale for all the nerds out there, which is fun. Uh, I love the idea of reprising Danny's birthday story. It makes sense to bring back that story as villain. I especially like the concept of an old villain coming back to finish the job. This is my note. All great mm-hmm. concepts executed terribly and nonsensically, in my opinion. But back to the feedback. Uh, I'll be honest, I can't remember what happened at the end of the original story, so I'm not sure if it makes total sense for the Beast to return, it doesn't, or if it's supposed to be dead, but who actually cares, I guess. I definitely care. Editorial doesn't care. Um, (laughs) Editorial clearly needed Danny dead and for the murderer to be someone who could disappear afterwards and without the audience caring. If it had been Davos, for instance, I'd want an entire story dedicated to getting insight into his life before and after he finally killed Danny. Well, it's funny mm-hmm. to imagine this story as happy 50th anniversary Danny Rand rip Danny Rand. The QR code mm-hmm. post credit scene does reveal we're likely getting a new story sometime soon. I don't like the QR code gimmick. It's not feature-proof. I hope the pages are just included in trade paperbacks, which reminds me, will this issue ever be collected into a trade? The fact that it was a skeletal hand had me very excited for something wacky. However, I am concerned it won't follow up on Lee Lin's story at all. The fate of Kunlun or hell, if I'm being really pessimistic, even feature little old pay. Justice for pay. <laughs> hey, if mm-hmm. you think you're being pessimistic, yeah. uh, I think we've outdone you here. But um, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. thank you for your feedback. Uh, I too don't know if the fate of Kunlun will be resolved. It's currently been taken over by Lin Lee's evil brother. I didn't read, actually, I didn't read mm. that Daredevil issue where he, or did I? I don't remember. I don't it didn't even It doesn't mention, mention it. it. Oh, no, well, yeah, it's not relevant. That's crazy. Um, <laughs> is yeah. So I think I think that is all the feedback. Yeah. 
Actually, got it. Got one from uh, a friend uh, on Instagram. Oh yeah. Um, he usually writes blogs about action figures, but his favorite character is Iron Fist. He actually has a has very cool tattoos of uh, David Aha's uh, artwork on his arms. Oh, so, cool. um, for him to actually write a blog means this is a ver- about a, a comic book is a very big thing. Uh, Although the fact that it's about uh, Iron Fist is not surprising because it's his favorite character. Yeah. Um, let, let me just read uh, something from his blog very quickly. <clears throat> just the latter part. He just says this. Um, so a single printed page, story page, replaced by a single page with a QR code. Must be a pretty unimportant throwaway scene, right? <laughs> no, it's a glowing fist bursting from the grave of Dan Arand. Two months after his death, why, why did it say two months? Well, it did say weeks later. Uh, told you nobody in comics stays dead forever. This death didn't even last for one page. Maybe it's not clear exactly what is emerging from the grave. The hand appears blue and skeletal. Is, is this some sort of evil zombie spirit version of Danny? I don't know. There's no clue given as to where this will be picked up in future issues. Cheap death, cheap gimmick, cheap resurrection. Okay, but that's just uh, the... Eight pages. Um, so that's that's the end of his uh, review of the final story. He just didn't feel that it was a it was a good good uh, death issue, or mm-hmm. at least death uh, eight pages. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, I have thoughts on that. Uh, I think it was actually a dog shit death issue. In eight pages. Mm-hmm. That's just my personal opinion. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna have to censor that, but whatever. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, we got uh, we got two bits of positive feedback, I think, and the rest was mm-hmm. negative. But you know, mm-hmm. um, for those, I envy those yeah. positive people. Um, <laughs> I just, mm-hmm. I hope that he won't turn into a villain. And I hope we all have dancing in rainbows, but who knows. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It sucks. It sucks mm-hmm. to be. Uh, someone said, "Boy, it must suck to be an Iron Fist fan." Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah, sure does. Yeah, we were I still think so it's going to end up somehow with Timeless. I don't know. I just still, I it might, it might end up something like that. Maybe not, exa- not exactly like that. Of but course, I because... hated that, so that yeah. doesn't yeah. help. I mean, if that mm-hmm. does become the roadmap, then. Yeah. I liked it as a one off feeling it too. Not feeling it. Mm -hmm. I liked it as a one off Elseworlds, but definitely not as a place for Danny to Mm -hmm. go. Where it's supposed to go, yeah. 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 Like I want him back as Iron Fist for God's sake, not (laughs) that. But I I just don't see how it possibly because it's so far in the future, I just as we were saying, I don't see how it could possibly be something Mm -hmm. that they're gonna then build toward. Well I Um, more think or at least it would be stupid stupid to do it because it wouldn't make sense yeah sorry but i, I more no, go think i more think like it's not going to go to that exact point but it's it like when i initially thought it, i thought oh it's going to go to the point where danny's going to start working for contra and trying to you know take over the world and stuff i don't think it'll actually get to that mm-hmm. end point and mm-hmm. again uh, i don't know i still think the villain thing's going to happen but i don't know in what context i think the villain thing's going to happen because they have it in for danny which i think is you know, <laughs> clear. So, mm-hmm. yeah. Uh, yeah. To I mean, to be perfectly honest, I'm. I mean, I enjoy a good villain. Villain Danny could be really interesting. I if it was done well. I just there's no reason mm-hmm. to think it would be done well. Because nothing's mm-hmm. been done well with him since. Like Daredevil yeah. or Shadowland. Right. Yeah. I mean, I I I'm someone who enjoyed Shadowland. I'm someone who likes stories I, like that. Yeah. But mm-hmm. I, I'm with you. Like I think I think a good villain run is doable uh i just <laughs> given the the runs we've just had i yeah it's uh, it's just and, where it's going <laughs> yeah and if it is yeah. to, then i have to be angry on two levels i have to come in angry <laughs> at both podcasts and say number one this is not what conscious <laughs> <doing right now. laughs> has zero interest in any more moon knights why does he need danny he doesn't right now he has like a whole army of moon knights and like uh and and it just makes no sense to go to it's like when they tried to catch up to 20 uh, when they redid iron man 2020 and they just made a complete mess of it because it was written so far in the past 
that it it kind of was a good story for 2020 and like you start writing it in 2020 it's terrible it was, <laughs> I'm, and which i'm sure marvel if they ever get to 2099 and we still have comics they will also mess that up <laughs> yeah at that point it's just it's just going to be all qr codes yeah <laughs> yeah the whole comic great <laughs> <Thank> you phrase <laughs> and i think exactly. i think what danny really needs right like a villain run, even if it's well written, would just be bad for him right now. He really needs just a good heroic run, mm-hmm. and it feels yeah, like I, I agree. pulling teeth and begging Marvel to give us that. Like it's mm. they just won't do it. Uh, also, mm. we got a comment on our previous episode, ironically titled "Happy 50th Birthday Iron Fist." Mm. Um, I think <laughs> I think we did a better tribute to Iron Fist than Marvel did, uh, and it's from <laughs> Andrew, he says, "Tie for your vid." Anyone? Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Well, thank you. Um, so I think that about wraps us up. Uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, let me just say, uh, in a month, I might get an audience with CB. I don't know if he can give uh, me the time of day again, like last time. Last time he just didn't have, you know, too many people around him. This yeah. time it's a it's a really big con here at the Philippines. So, um. I'll try to see if I can get an audience with him. Maybe let him know the the pulse of the Iron Fist fans. Uh, I'm going to write them an email for sure. But I wanted to to uh, let him know firsthand. Maybe he reads that email that I'm about to write. Uh, we'll see, and then just let him know that uh, where we're at, and see if he does some goes goes with it. Um, somehow in the future, yeah. uh, do something with it. Feedback, you know, directly from a fan. Uh, because he did give me an interview a year ago, so I'm pretty sure yes. he he would remember me, because he 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 does remember uh, people uh, amazingly, um, because a friend of mine spoke with him, um, uh, I mean years ago, and then he saw him at the, our con last year, and um, he remembered him, and uh, I, I think he will remember me because we did that interview. So I hope I hope uh, I can help uh, I can help us all out. Uh, next month. Fingers oh, crossed. Good luck. Yeah, Just, that would yes. be amazing. Please, no Thank Danny you. villain. <laughs> yes. Yeah. I, hope, actually, I hope it's not in the works yet. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that even makes me think of the fact that they don't... It would have been really nice for them to have a letters page in this issue. Yeah. From fans. That they didn't yeah. do that either. There's not enough good letters for them to read, so... <laughs> <laughs> There's only two. <laughs> the rest are negative. <laughs> <laughs> Well, they are going to get that email from me. Yeah. yeah. I, I'm going to put together uh, a lot of the comments just so uh, I'm sure somebody will read it from Marvel. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kevin Faji's secretary. Yeah. <laughs> um, Maybe. Uh, anyone else have anything to add? No. All right. So, Emma. Good. Yes. Where can you be found? I know where you can be found, but would you like to tell yeah. people? Yes, of course. Um, I can be found on Tumblr, um, bookoftheironfist.tumblr.com, where I will be loving on Danny, even if Marvel no longer does. So you can mm. find me there. Yeah. Uh, Omar, you run your blogs and stuff. Yeah, I have, um, I am ironfist.home.blog, uh, uh, along with the socials. Um, I'll be busy with the blog. For the next few weeks, I have, still have a couple of interviews coming up, um, so I hope you guys look forward to that. Uh, plus, uh, I might do um, uh, a bit of a feedback of the uh, Iron Fist 50th anniversary signing event from yesterday at our LCS. Cool. Um, I'll, I'll try to get that as soon as possible. Great. Um, all right. Rebecca, do you want me to ask you where you can be found? No. Okay. Maybe they can find me. If they don't, then they should. You can find her. <laughs> <your glasses. laughs> yeah. All right, everyone. Uh, see ya. Until next time. Uh, you know, if it's your birthday, be careful. <laughs> <laughs> All right, see ya. Fist. Yeah. Bye. 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 Everyone. Bye. Iron Fist and all other characters in these comics are properties of Marvel and Disney. 
Any musical images we use belong to their respective copyright holders. We do this for fun, so please don't sue us. You can contact us at sons of the dragon podcast at gmail.com. Just send us mail, comments, thoughts, anything you want, really. It doesn't even have to be related to Iron Fist. If you don't want it read on the air, though, make sure you mention that. You can also find us on Facebook, the Immortal Iron Fist Podcast, Sons of the Dragon. Our Twitter, at Iron Fist Podcast. Our SoundCloud, soundcloud.com forward slash Sons of the Dragon, uh, hyphens where the spaces are. Our YouTube, Connor Carl. Just search Iron Fist Podcast and you'll find us real quick. We are also on iTunes. If you find us there, give us a review and rate us. If it's less than five stars, please say why so we can improve the show. And we're on Podcast Garden in the literature section. And last but not least, head over to our WordPress, Sons of the Dragon, the Immortal Iron Fist Podcast, That's where I put all the show notes. I'd like to thank Thomas Tissot for composing the Iron Fist theme song we use at the start of our Iron Fist episodes on the podcast. I'd also like to thank Peter John Sikorsky for composing the Power Man and Iron Fist theme we use at the start of our Power Man and Iron Fist episodes. And finally, thanks to you guys for listening.